Hi everybody, it's Brad. Uh, today we're going to be learning how to use the AccuQuilt shapes that are built into Embroidery Works software. Um, and uh, this is really, really, really easy if you have the AccuQuilt cutter. Uh, any of the shapes that you can cut out with the AccuQuilt cutter, um, most of them anyway, can be turned into an embroidery design and sewn onto the fabric using your embroidery machine. Uh, it's so much easier than having to cut out an applique yourself. Uh, so we're just going to get started here. The first thing I want to do is select what hoop I'm going to use. And the way you do that is with the Preferences button. It looks like a little folder. If you hover your mouse over it, a little yellow box will show up that says Preferences. That's what we want to click. Left click right on that and we've got under Program Preferences the default page is the hoops page. So that's where we can pick what hoop we're going to use. Now there are a ton of hoops in here which can be a little bit confusing. So I'm just going to go through and uh, tell you uh, which hoops th which hoop is your largest hoop depending on what machine you have if you've got an alissimo your large hoop is a 200 by 300 um, if you have a unity a spirit or an elegante your large hoop is 180 by 300 if you have an asante an elagio um, or I think those are the two actually that have a 160 by 260. If you have a Allure or an older Asante machine, like that's only got a card slot, your big hoop's a 5 by 7, which is 130 by 180. And if you've got a small embroidery only machine, like a so uh, the old Esprit, there's a couple other ones that are 4 by 4 only, plus the Sophia's only 4 by 4, is 100 by 100. So just pick the biggest hoop that you have. I'm going to pick 200 by 300 because I have an Alissimo. Uh, and when you have the hoop that you have selected, you just click OK. All right, so there is my hoop, and it's it shows me the, the boundaries of my hoop. And the way I just zoomed in right there, I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse. It's the little wheel between your two mouse buttons. If you don't have a physical mouse, you can just use the... Um, the zoom button menu here, <laughs> zoom button menu, the, it's like a slider. It's got a plus and minus on it, you just push it up to zoom in, pull it back to zoom out. That way you can zoom if you're using a laptop or something that doesn't have a scroll wheel. Okay, um, so there's our hoop and we want to bring in some applique shapes. So we go up to this little, looks like a little gear uh, with an arrow pointing down on it. If you hover your mouse over it, it says, calls it Merge Design. Uh, essentially this is a little library of designs that come with the program. We're going to go ahead and left click on the little gear and my shapes pop up. There they are. Okay, so I've got all these shapes here. Um, these are actually all different dies. So the name of your die, like there's one that's called round flower, there's one that's called feathers, hexagon, etc., etc. These are all various um, cutting, uh, what do they call them, dies. They're, they're various dies that are available to be purchased for the cutter. Um, so you pick one that you have. Uh, in, in our case today, I'm going to be building us a little bear. So we're going to use this one from the baby baby die. All right, so we're going to left click on that. Okay, so there is all the individual shapes that get cut out from this die. So we could actually build two different appliques with this one. We could build this bear or we could build this little duck. Uh, so I'm going to build the bear. So the base for the bear is the bear's body right here. So I'm going to left click on the, the body of the bear here and just choose OK. Left click on OK and my bear just shows up right in the middle of my screen. It's automatically centers it right in the middle of the hoop. Um, and this is it. I mean, this is this is in there. I could save this and I'd have this shape of this bear ready to go. But we want to build the rest of the bear. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see everything. Um, and I'm going to go up to the uh, Merge Design button again. I left click on that. Now, it doesn't remember where we were. I wish that it did. It did. It would make it easier, but it doesn't. So we have to scroll back down to Baby Baby. We're going to left click on it again. This time I'm going to choose the bear eye, and I'm going to choose OK. Now I have to move my eye so that it is where I want it to be relative to my bear, and I've got one eye. Now I could go back up and get the other eye by choosing Merge Design and choosing the eye, or I could left click on my eye, and what happens is everything else kind of fades away when you have one thing selected. See how the rest of the bear fades out? That way I can see what I have selected. I'm going to right click and choose Copy. And then I'm going to right click again and choose paste and it puts a new eye and it puts it exactly in the same spot as the old eye. Um, but now I can just move that eye uh, over to where his other eye should be. Good. And now we're going to go up and get the next element of our bear. So we go in here, grab the design, 
scroll down to the bottom baby baby we're gonna choose the bow tie this time and choose OK now we just left click and drag with our mouse to get the tie at about where you would put a bow tie on a bear right about there good now we're just gonna keep getting elements here I'm gonna go a little faster uh, so um, you know just save time here so we got the bow tie we're gonna get the first part of the inner part of the ear then we're gonna go get the next part of the ear which is gonna be on his right side uh, there and his right ear inner ear we put that right on his inner ear good and then we go down to get the next part which is gonna be I think his paw oh it's his foot okay so we get his foot and we're gonna put that little inner fabric of the foot there same thing on the next one do 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 getting pieces of a bear oh I passed it there we go alright so here's his right foot put that in there now we're gonna go in and merge design again you see where this is going you just go in and pull in each individual piece and arrange it and these are for his little paws one there and we're gonna get another little paw and he should be complete after that I think Let's see if there's any other bear pieces doesn't look like it because the next piece is a duck there's no ducks in my bear alright so we put the last paw piece in and there we go now this we could take this and sew it out but there's a couple things I want to change about it um, see how long these stitches are that are coming in here these stitches are a little too long for these small areas um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick all the small areas which is gonna be the bow tie the um, the inner parts of the paw and the inner parts of the ear and the inner parts of the feet uh, I want to select all of those things but not the the bare outer part because I think that's an appropriate stitch length for that part so what we're gonna do we're gonna go and hold down our shift key on your keyboard hold down shift left click on the bow tie in oh in this object tree I didn't I didn't mention this okay look over here the object tree this is each individual segment broken down in the order that it's gonna sew out and if you left click on something in this object tree it highlights it so you don't have to click on it over here uh, and what we want to do is select from the bow tie down to the paw and the way you select like a whole line of stuff at once uh, is you pick the first thing that you want hold down the shift key and click the last thing that you want and it'll highlight just those things All right, so we've got the bow tie the two ears the two feet and the two paws um, and we want to change the the stitch width um, of these objects and the way you do that is in your properties menu if you look down here you see the properties menu it shows us that we've got these two colors selected that's because he's got a red bow tie and these parts are brown um, but if we go over to the applique tab we're gonna hit the applique tab and we can choose whether this is going to be an E stitch or a blanket stitch an E stitch the stitch length goes long and then short long and then short whereas a blanket stitch is they're all long essentially all right, we're going to leave it on E stitch and we're going to change the stitch width from 4 to 2. And uh, when you change this to a 2, just hit enter and it will do it. And look, that's a little, well, you know what? That might be just a little too short. So we're going to change it to 2.5 and hit enter. Yeah, okay, so we'll leave it on 2.5. That, that looks good, although it is a little crowded down here near his foot. That's all right. We'll match our thread colors when we sew it out. Um, now, I'm going to just left click off of that um, so that nothing is selected. I just left clicked out in space here. And now, this time, I want to highlight the whole design. So I'm going to left click and drag a box around everything. And see, it's actually highlighted everything in my design when I did that. I'm going to go back to applique. And look what you can do. You can hit this fabric preview button. Left click right on here and watch what it does. It actually gives me a little preview of what it will look like. Uh, when my design is sewn out. So if I wanted to see what this would look like with um, maybe a different color for his paws, I think. Let's see if I'm right here before I change the color to another color. Highlight the whole thing. It does. Ha! I knew it would do that. 
I didn't really. I was just guessing. But uh, what we can do is actually change the color. See, the, this stitch and this stitch were originally the same color. And so when it did the fabric preview, it made them the same color, and you couldn't really see them. Uh, so what you do is you pick the, um, the part of the design that you want to change the color of. In this case, I just left-clicked on the ear at the top here in my object tree and then held Shift left clicked on the very last paw that got me all of the inner parts of the bear um, except for the the bow tie I wanted the bow tie to be the same um, and then when I've got all those selected I can just click on this color right here where it shows me the color it brings me a little um, menu that shows all the different colors that are available and I can just pick one and hit OK and there you see it's changed my my fabric preview there too that way you can you can plan what your appliques are gonna look like. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. You just want to pick like a similar tone to what you have planned out. So, what's gonna happen when we go to sew this design out? Well, what you're gonna want to do is is use your cutting um, die to cut out the individual pieces so that they're ready to go. So you take the the fabric and put it in the machine and run, run, you know, turn the crank and get all your individual pieces so they're cut out. Um, and then you're going to put this design in your embroidery machine and uh, here I'm going to do a little stitch simulator here so we can watch it sew out. Uh, the first thing it's going to do, it's going to do, oh, you know what, I should turn off this fabric preview so we can see just the stitches. I'm going to go back to my highlight everything, go back to my applique, turn off the fabric preview and then we've just got the stitches. Now. I'm going uh, to, to do a, um, a stitch simulation, by the way, it's this button right here. It's got a, um, a needle with thread in it and a little, looks like a pause button, like on a remote control. So you click that and this little menu comes up that lets me move the scroll wheel. Well, I'm just clicking and dragging actually to do it. I'm not using the scroll wheel. I'm just clicking and dragging this bar. And so what it's doing here, the first stitch that happens is a straight stitch, okay? And then it's going to stop right here. And I'm going to take my perfectly cut bear shape that my die made, and I'm going to lay it down right inside this line. And uh, it's a good idea to use a little bit of spray adhesive or a glue stick or something to make sure that it's going to stick to it. Um, and then it's going to go and keep going, and it's going to bring out the E stitch to tack it down and hold it in place. And it's going to match up perfectly. I was worried the first time I did this. I was like, there's no way it's going to match up perfectly. It does. It really does. It matches perfectly, um, and uh, I was pleasantly surprised by that. But then it's going to go and do my eyes. So it puts the placement line for the eye, and then the tack down. It doesn't actually put because it's such a small space. It doesn't put a e stitch in. It just tacks it down with a running stitch. But it still works. Same for the other eye. First one run stitch, then it stops, then another run stitch. Okay, and then the bow tie, and then so on for the rest of the pieces of the design. And when I'm done it should look something like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's a bunch of these and that you don't have to build all of them. Um, some of them are pre-built. Like for instance, if you go in, I'm just gonna highlight everything and hit the delete button here. Um, and I'm gonna go back up to my merge design. The, a couple of them are pre-built. Like for instance, there's one that's an airplane. Um, and if you go in, it has one that's already assembled. They, they still have the pieces, so you could build it yourself if you wanted to. But it's way easier just to choose this one that's already assembled. Hit OK. And this, when you sew this out, this is cute. Look at this. Look at that little airplane. That is adorable. Um, but so that one's already made, so you don't actu actually have to go in and place everything. I don't know why they didn't do that for all of them. I guess they want you to have uh, like a sense of accomplishment or something. Um, but it's pretty sweet the ones that let you do this because you can just take this and go and save it. So what if I wanted to change the size of this design? Well, it's possible but not particularly easy. Uh, the die is only going to cut the fabric at a certain size, the size that it's made to do. Um, you can't increase the size of your die so you really shouldn't be able to increase the size of your AccuQuilt design here. Uh, so what happens if I highlight this whole design here and try to increase its size by using the little sizing boxes here, it doesn't let me do it. It just won't go. Um, so what you would do if you wanted to do this airplane but bigger, you're going to have to sew it out like a normal applique, meaning you're going to have to put a piece of fabric down and then trim around the outside of each individual element. 
Um, so we're going to go, uh, if you want to do this, you're going to go over to your applique tab. Now you have to have the whole design selected. You go to your applique tab and then left click here where it says pre-cut. This will turn off uh, the fact that it is going to think that you're using the AccuQuilt stuff. So turn this off and then I'm also going to turn off the fabric preview here because I'm going to do a, a stitch simulation. And now it's going to let me increase the size of my design. I can increase it, decrease it, whichever I want. So now I've got my design. Uh, no longer thinks that it is being used with the AccuQuilt machine. It's just these shapes. And so the difference is when I go to do a stitch simulation, watch what happens. It sews out one. It will stop here uh, for me to put my fabric down. So I put a piece of fabric down and it will tack it down and it will stop and then I'll take my applique scissors and cut off the excess just like a normal applique and then it will go and put the blanket stitch down. Now my stitching's not going to be as perfect because the cutting isn't going to be as perfect as it was with um, the AccuCut. Accu -cut. But if you want to have one of these designs a different size than the default that's the only way to do it. So um, I guess you know they, they let you do that just because they wanted to uh, be able to say that you could in fact change the size but it's not particularly useful because the the real neat part of this is the fact that the AccuQuilt cut, cutter cuts out the, the shapes for you. Alright, so let's go do a different video.